Hey y'all, in 4 h and h here with my son Joshua. We are headed to K5WAN, that's Wendell Neal. We're going to his shack, his house, uh, to do some antenna work. We, uh, we put up a HF antenna earlier this year, a ZS6BKW. He has a, a Comet GP9 for VHF and UHF and uh, it's mounted on a bracket on the end of the house. But he's only able to get into a couple of repeaters and, and only one that uh, he and I can even communicate through. And uh, more importantly, I want to get it to where he can get into the Skywarn nets. So MFJ donated a 33-foot telescopic fiberglass mast and Kirk KB9JQU donated coax LMR400 for this project so we're gonna see if we can uh, get Wendell a little bit better uh, situation as far as uh, getting his antenna up into the air and be able to hit some other repeaters check in with you later hey y'all in 4 h and H I'm back here I'm at k5wan's ham radio station there's the comet GP9 and we're still going to use that, but what we want to do is change out the mass, try to get a little better elevation on that. And we're going to experiment a little bit. You know, if you watch my video about nitpicking antenna height, we're going to do a little experimentation. The objective is to try to get Wendell to be able to hit some of the repeaters that do Skywarn. So here's the mast that was donated by MFJ. Uh, they actually sent this mast before they announced that they were going out of business. And it's a 33-foot telescopic fiberglass. That's my son, Joshua. That's KN4LFU helping out here today. And uh, so the plan is right now, it looks like what we're going to do is let this mass go all the way down to the ground and let the ground take the weight. And then we'll let the smaller bracket up there, let me zoom in. We'll let that smaller bracket just act as a stabilizer. Uh, oh, and I want to mention, too, uh, you can see down there, coax. There's a, I believe that's a 30-foot piece, 50. 50. And then the shorter one is how big? 12. 12, okay. And that, so that's LMR 400. We're switching out uh, what he has right now, which is what, 213? For LMR 400, that's definitely an improvement for VHF and UHF. And I want to thank Kurt, KB9JQU, for donating the uh, coax for this project and as you guys know if you watched my video earlier this year when we installed the ZS6 BKW which is back there uh, Wendell is oh and look at this there's this vertical which uh, what vertical is that six, uh, Hustler 6 BTV Hustler 6 BTV so uh, Wendell is one of the the big dogs with the hurricane watch net so we want to keep him operating as best as possible. So the purpose of today's job, we want to be able to get him into the Skywarn repeaters when we have local issues like tornadoes and things like that coming through. All right, I'll check back with you in a bit. Hey y'all in 4 h and eight. So this is Wendell's shack. Of course he works with the Hurricane Watch Net. They feed info from ham operators all around the affected area of a hurricane, they feed that data to the National Hurricane Center in Miami and it helps them with their forecast and their, uh, and their reports of damage. So uh, here is the Yesu FTM 400. I've got it dialed up to the 146.805 repeater and that's our objective. We wanna be able to get Wendell into that repeater. That is a main repeater when we have a Skywarn net here. And you see, we can trip it, but barely hear it. So uh, we're also going to try to make sure he can get into the 146835, which is my friend Pete's machine. It's on the same mountain with, with the 805. Okay, so here is Pete's machine. It says Dahlonega, but it's actually, this particular one is on the same mountain as the 805, 146805, which is in Jasper, Georgia, uh, or near there. But... Uh, that one's coming back in about half scale. But the problem is I've, uh, I've listened to Wendell through that repeater and 
he was very, very weak getting into it. Let me ID. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. Okay, so we'll see what our results are after we get the antenna moved. Hey Joshua, that's KN4 LFU up there on the roof, getting uh, brackets and uh, nuts and bolts loosened up. Pull that Comet GP9 down. Okay, so it's temporarily mounted up there to the bracket and Joshua is going to drive this ground rod into the ground and then we're going to clamp this part to the ground rod so that that'll stabilize it at the base. Okay, back in a few. Okay, so that's the, the ground rod. It's a four footer. Just There we go. Yeah, that should be about right. So that's going to um, stabilize the base of the antenna. There's going to be a clamp on there. Okay, uh, initial deployment here, coax is connected. I'm going to go inside and run a test. And then we'll make some adjustments. We may end up going a little lower than where it is. It's extended fully now, way higher than it was. Uh, but it could turn out that we need to drop it a little bit. We'll find out. Okay, I'm in the shack now. Let's see. Well, the 835's coming in about like it did before. Let me go to the 805. That'll be uh, right along in here. There it is. This is the one we could barely hear. Wow. Okay, so it's about half scale. N4 H and H testing, N4 H and H clear. And that repeater's a long ways from here. Alright, so I'm I'm gonna have him lower it a little bit and see if it helps. Because remember, higher is not always better if you've got near field obstacles. Okay, so we did some tripping of repeaters and some tests to find the best height. And it was not to be fully extended, but slightly below fully extended. Now Josh was just taping everything off. He's uh, See what's the great thing about that pole there. He, he marked that with a Sharpie so he could put it right back where it was as he tapes it, tapes the coax there. So even again, again, you see all the foliage back there, the trees. So the idea, we're, we're not able to get this antenna above the tree. So you have to play with the height to find where you, so we had per particular repeaters we wanted to get Wendell into. So we messed around with the height up and down until we got those repeaters the best and a, kind of a balanced, you know, you might take a little one S unit lo loss on one to get the other, that kind of thing. And uh, so this, this should be good now. Um, I think we're probably at about 26 feet up to the base of the antenna. I'm pretty sure that's about where we are. So now we'll, uh, button everything up okay jobs complete Josh is over there putting up the tools Wendell's down here admiring <laughs> Wendell you like that I love it <laughs> all right yeah we've already done some tests and we're able to hit the repeaters we want to hit so mission accomplished okay in 4 H and H here and uh, the antennas complete and there's Pete's Delonegan machine I talked to Miss D a while ago, Pete's wife, and uh, she said we were coming in just a slight bit of noise on the signal, but before you know, we could hit the repeater, but you really couldn't hear detect much of what was being said. Now, we've got some improvement in the, uh, several, several repeaters are coming good now. Let's see the, uh, this Fayetteville repeater. N4 H and H testing. And then this Gainesville repeater. Good club, that Gainesville group. N4 H and H testing. Now there's a little power line noise coming in on there. That's what the grind is, but that's a good signal there. So we got Jasper repeaters here. 
in for H and H testing. And then there's a stronger one. And remember, we're way away from these repeaters. I mean, we're probably 60 miles. So that's Jasper. And then we've got Stone Mountain, which is a good one for Wendell and I to be able to communicate with. Let me get over here, Stone Mountain. There we go, uh, it'll be that one there, 146.76, full scale, N4 H and H testing. So, all right, mission accomplished. Thanks for uh, coming along with us on this antenna project. Wendell Williams out here, he's beyond 10 buck two, he's out in 10 buck three, so we, we needed to get his antenna up a little more and uh, get, get uh, some more access to more repeaters. Okay, Bill, well, thank you for the audio check and uh, 73, and I hope you had a good time at the Ham Fest and uh, Mobile Safe out there, and maybe we'll talk to you again. Kilo 5, Whiskey Alpha, November. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We're down the port 285 is turning. We're not quite on it yet, but it looks like it's going to be the usual uh, busy south. So, uh, yeah, it was a good time. I might like be back in the morning. I don't know. We live out in Douglasville, so it's a bit of a hike. Okay. Hey, y'all, this is Wendell in his command and control center. K5 WAN. Uh, what, what was that, Teresa? Also known as the living room. Okay, y'all hear that? Teresa says that's also known as the living room. But as far as Wendell goes, that's command and control. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for uh, riding along on this video. Another antenna project from a good friend, Wendell, K5WAN. Listen out for him on the Hurricane Watch Net on 7.268 and 14.325 when we have a threat of hurricane. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.